Unfortunately, O'Neill Cruz has a fractured ankle. Let's break it down on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Monday, April 10th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's talk about O'Neill Cruz, who had an awkward slide at the at home plate on Sunday afternoon and uh, fractured his ankle. This is a huge loss. Obviously, Scott, someone we were drafting in the top five or six rounds in fantasy baseball leagues. And yeah, obviously, we're losing a lot of power and speed potential here right now. The three most added shortstops on CBS are Bryce Tarang, Jorge Mateo, and Orlando Arcia. If you are looking for a, an O'Neill Cruz replacement, how would you rank that group? I would put Tarang at the top of that list. And who was the second one you mentioned? Jorge Mateo. Jorge Mateo. I guess Mateo over Arcia. Like, obviously, none of them is going to come close to what we thought O'Neill's could, Cruz could do in, in terms of power. They might be able to replicate his speed, at least Tarang and Mateo. Mateo might actually do more speed wise, but yeah, I mean, obviously if you drafted, if you paid fifth round costs for O'Neill Cruz, you did so with the hope that he was going to be one of those, uh, you know, a real emergent player for you. One of the best sources of power at the position, a, a position that even though, you know, we think of shortstop is deep, it doesn't have a lot of sluggers like 30 Homer guys. There's Corey Seager, Fernando Tatis when he gets back and O'Neill Cruz. That's basically it uh, in, in, in terms of expecting 30 plus homers. And he's going to be out a while with this injury. We don't know exactly how long. If it's just a simple fracture, you know, maybe he could be back within two months, but that's the minimum time we're talking about. Cause it, you know, if there's ligament damage in there, I mean, it's possible it's a season ending injury, which would be really upsetting. If, you're counting if you were counting on O'Neill Cruz to be a big power source, then rather than just resorting to the waiver wire, you might need to think about making a trade. And the good news is there are some high end shortstops that may even provide some power who are off to particularly slow starts. I'm thinking Corey Seeger, who I mentioned, has, has yet to hit a home run. Um, so if you play in a shallow league, maybe somebody has a good backup option at shortstop already and is just getting kind of antsy. You know, Corey Seager didn't have the best year last year. Might be able to pull that off. Same thing with Carlos Correa. He probably won't hit 30 homers, but that's in the realm of possibility for him. He, he has yet to hit his first and was also a little underwhelming relative to expectations last year. If neither of those is realistic, there are other interesting trade targets. Anthony Volpe, uh, I still have faith, even though he's been terrible out of the gate. Uh won't live up to O'Neill Cruz's power potential, but if you're just looking for production from shortstop and don't aren't so worried about the shape of production, so let's say it's like a points league. I mean, Volpe with as much as he walks, as many bases he's going to steal, could uh, could maybe come close to what you're losing there. Uh, also, Ezekiel Tovar, he's only 62 percent rostered in fantasy, so you may just be able to straight pick him up. Um. Off to a, another rookie who's off to a really slow start, but I still have enough faith in the skill set to to give him the benefit of the doubt right now. Two other names I'll throw in that mix, Scott. If you play in a categories league, Javier Baez off to a very slow start, as is uh, Ahmed Rosario. Feels like Rosario gets off to a slow start every year, but uh, I still have confidence in him. Give you some batting average, some speed as well. Let's talk about Chris Bubich, Scott, because he seems to be the the hot topic here from the weekend. Obviously, there are you know, lots of names emerging, lots of pitchers on the waiver wire. Chris Bubich is just 4% rostered on CBS, so widely available. He went out on Sunday through six shutout innings with nine strikeouts to zero walks, only two hits allowed, 19 swinging strikes, and he kind of looks like a new pitcher. Are you trying to add Chris Bubich where he's available right now? Yes. Yeah, he's one of my top priorities off the waiver wire. Uh, I give Lance Brozdowski a lot of credit for this at Lance Braz on Twitter. If you don't follow him, you should, because he's been releasing these pitcher notes almost daily. He, he uh, goes over some, uh, some shape information, new things pitchers are doing for four or five guys every day. And, and after Chris Bubich's first start, 
he had all this information that like it, it, I wouldn't even know how to find the information. Lance Brozdowski is somebody who's worked with driveline baseball before. So I think he has access to information that the rest of us don't. And uh, he was talking about how much Chris Bubich, how much he's like lowered his release, how much, uh, how much more effective his fastball and change up look and a new slider uh, that earns good stuff plus numbers. So he was talking him up after the first start, and then he goes out and has this gym at San Francisco. And it's like, all right, I'm in. Ton of whiffs for Bubich in this start. Um, and, uh, you know, basically lived up to Lance Brozdowski's prognostication for nice. him, his prediction for him. Yeah. Again, that is Chris, uh, Chris Bubich, only 4% rostered. So if you're looking for a pitcher, go out and add him. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>